actually turn this into a look. Hi, I'm Sandra Poppet. And I'm Jeremy. And um, this kind of stuff normally happens after hours, but because of the original lab coming up, this year we moved it up two weeks on these fellas, causing us to have to write. What happened to the power? Somebody go check the breaker! Breaker's good! Breaker's good! Nothing wrong with the breaker! They must have had a power outage or something. <laughs> Think it could have been an EMP? Did you experience any disruptions? No! Told y'all what, crazy. Told you it was gonna happen. I'm safe. They can't get in your mind if you ain't got one. Now, I don't know, guys. I think, uh... We gotta go out and see if we can get some cars going. If there's a problem, we probably wanna get home to our loved ones. I'm getting out of here. Dead. Yo, Jason, I'm rolling too, man. Let's get out of here. It won't run. EMP took out my ECU. Hey, Jenny, did you know what's going on? I don't know what happened. Everything just turned off. Okay, uh, see if you can call the power company and see if there's an outage. Um, I would, but my phone's not working either. What's going on? Hey man, this thing was quite running. Just right like that? Yeah. Something's wrong. Okay. Something, something weird's going on. Hey, the neighbors have horses. Maybe we should get them. Yeah, it looks like we'll be walking otherwise. Wait, wait just a minute. Sandra Prophet. I'm Jeremiah Prophet. Welcome to another episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that as much as we had fun making it. Uh, it's a weird start to the episode, but in light of the fact that we built this cool new EMP40, we just thought we would have some fun with it, and I'm really excited to show you this rig. Uh, we built it for SEMA, for Kenda Tires booth, and it's gonna go to a bunch of shows this summer. It's an awesome rig, let's check it out. So I'm really excited to show you this FJ40 that we built. Um, it's a personal project. I am calling it the EMP40. Uh, I'll tell you why in just a little bit. But this rig is, because it's a personal project, I get to have some fun with the details. Uh, we did some unconventional things, spent maybe a little bit too much time in some areas uh, to make it what I wanted it to be. But I think it turned out really, really cool. And so let's check it out. We call this the EMP40, basically because if it happened, this should withstand an EMP pulse. So for those of you who know what that is, there's a way to disrupt um, electronic circuitry by setting off a nuclear bomb in the atmosphere or probably some other uh, nefarious means, and that will disable everything with delicate electronic circuitry, including most automobiles. So there are people who want to have these trucks that are EMP hardened, and uh, that's not why I did it. I did it because I think it's fun and I wanted to do a military themed rig just worked out that we had an engine that was not electronically controlled so no computers anywhere but anyway uh, we're not doomsday theorists here but I guess you would say some would say the world is a fragile place and so it's uh, fun to toy around with the idea of an EMP proof rig 
So the heart of this FJ40 is this little B3.3 liter Cummins diesel. It's a tier one diesel, a brand new engine, but an older technology, so it doesn't require any electronic circuitry to run except for just one wire. Uh, and then of course the alternator, only other electric accessory on it. So it's not a very pretty engine. So we spent some time trying to make it look good in this engine compartment. Uh, tried to pay attention to the symmetry of the thing. Um, tried to cover up some of the things that aren't so savory. Uh, so we made these matching uh, air compressor and battery covers and the covers for the uh, intercooler system and the radiator all kind of blend in. And we spent a lot of time with yellow zinc because um, the tan and brown of this rig is super complemented by the looks of yellow zinc. Uh, if this was really a military vehicle, it wouldn't have any of this zinc. They would have just painted over everything in place, but that's not me. I got to have serious detail. And so I hope you can appreciate how much love we put into trying to make the whole engine compartment look great. Also, this engine, even though it only has 90 horsepower, um, it's actually pretty peppy. Uh, we've got 529 gears in the axles so that they can turn these Kenda Cleaver 35 inch tires, um, have a usable fifth gear. So far I've had it up to maybe 65 miles an hour. That was pretty good. So I told you that I got to have a lot of fun building this rig and doing things differently. I wasn't the only one. Um, Alex, our lead fabricator, foreman of the fabrication shop, uh, we call him the wizard. Um, he had a blast building this one-off military-themed front bumper. Um, kind of Oshkosh inspired, if you've seen those uh, military trucks. Uh, tons of work went into this. Uh, I know it doesn't seem like it, but making this particular corner is just a crazy amount of work. It's a beautiful bumper. Alex nailed it. This might be the only browned frame, well, let me rephrase that. This might be the only intentionally painted brown framed Land Cruiser there is. I wanted to go for that military look and you just have to have sort of a monochrome feel to that. Even though brown is an accent color on this rig, we did the suspension and undercarriage all in a color called Rockwood, and I think it turned out pretty nice. Then, to contrast the monochromatic chassis parts, we added gold zinc everywhere we could. Transfer case, bolts, U-bolts, shackles, clips, clamps, and screws, everything we could to make it pop a little bit. Some of the guys in the shop didn't think that the brown frame was gonna work out, but they changed their tune once we got the body on it. So the rear bumper on it is just our standard dual swing out rear bumper, um, except for some yellow zinc additions that I did to it. It's no different uh, than any of the other ones. Did put some quick fists on the back for a matching shovel and ax, which is fun. And what we did is we changed this rig to have a one piece fold down tailgate. So it emulates a factory soft top. So we used a one piece fold down tailgate. This is a replica from Real Steel Cruiser Parts because eventually this is gonna be a soft top FJ40 and uh, Kind of a mashup of years, really. Uh, it's a 73 cowling and a 68 tub, uh, jump seats and bucket seats out of a 76 or 77 FJ40. Kind of trying to use up some parts that we had around and make it uh, the way I like them set up. Um, anyway, got Linex uh, complete throughout the interior and underneath. Two part polyurea spray liner. Uh, should be pretty durable. The paint on this is Delfleet. Uh, we flattened it out. Um, but Delfleet is a, a PPG product, super industrial, heavy duty vehicle paint, like the military would do it. So the interior of this Land Cruiser, pretty much like a lot of the ones you see on our episodes, with the exception of no Dakota Digital gauges, and of course no air conditioning, there's no top. Um, Dakota Digital gauges wouldn't work after an EMP pulse, so it felt right to keep the factory gauges. There is the retro audio stereo system. Pretty sure that wouldn't, wouldn't survive an end of the world attack, but I guess if I'm, if I'm driving away from hordes of people with guns, I don't really need to be listening to music anyway. The rest of the dash, um, you'll see that argent color. It's actually super cool because from some angles, the metallic pieces look just like the body color and then they contrast when you see it from a different angle. So I'm super happy with the way that turned out. We've got our standard ash tree switch panel with the air compressor and the locker controls, plus my glow plugs are right there. Uh, no timer on this older engine like this, no computers to run the timer. Um, also in the Tuffy box I've got switches for my forward facing lights and my camp light and a way to charge my devices. Um, not that they'll work anyway, probably didn't need that. And then because there's no top on this vehicle and no place to put a good interior light, we installed a couple of these 
bendy lights. They were kind of new old stock. Like I said, we used a few parts that were laying around on this. And these will come in handy for when you need to read the map to your bunker. Get away. So you've heard me say on previous episodes that I am inspired by the wheels of a vehicle. And like a lot of this stuff that we build that's for me, we started with the wheels. So these wheels are military themed. I um, wanted to get some extra bolts and a fake beadlock ring. They're 17s, so of course they're a giant pain in the butt. We had to start with FJ40 wheels, uh, cut part of the wheel shell out and insert them into a 17 inch wheel that used to actually be for a Jeep. And we cut the center out of that and then the machined rings, and I guess there's probably 50 or 60 hours into these wheels each. Not very practical to build over and over and over again, uh, but great for this truck. And then you'll notice we took some factory hubcaps and we had them yellow zinc because, like I said, military bling all over this truck. The other inspiration for this vehicle is actually the 35 10 50 Kenda Cleaver tires. Uh, the guys at Kenda gave us these tires for a build for SEMA last year, but because SEMA didn't happen, we used them on this vehicle. Nothing like a tall, skinny 35 inch tire, uh, thanks to the guys at Kenda for that. So we'll see how much I, for detail, how many people noticed the one thing about this engine compartment that's not right yet, and it's this clamp. So if you'll notice, the clamp on the turbo is clear zinc. Oh, the horror, why clear? What's that one clear thing doing in there? Ah. Don't worry, I'm gonna switch it out to this. The reason I didn't do it is because I miscounted when I sent stuff to zinc. But really, things like this are about how much attention you pay to the details. And the more you, the farther you can go with respect to being detail oriented, the better. That's what makes rigs turn out great, is every little detail being paid attention to. So do not worry, this will soon replace this horrific eyesore of a silver clamp and the world will be right. All will be in peace and harmony and balance. But until then, I'm, I haven't slept, that's why I'm so tired. That thing's been keeping me awake for weeks. Actually, this day. So. This is kind of the end of phase one of this project. Um, after SEMA, uh, we'll bring it back in and we'll do a roll cage because it probably should have one since it's a four wheel drive and we'll put a factory soft top replica on it and uh, that way it'll be a little bit more practical to use you know, in three or four seasons. I wanna thank everyone here at the shop for helping me put this rig together. This kind of personal project normally happens after hours, nights, and weekends. And so to everyone who pitched in, thanks very much, especially Bob, Alex, and Matt, who donated a lot of their free time. I really appreciate it. We want to thank the guys at 511 Tactical for sending us some really cool gear bags for this rig. We also want to thank Faraday Defense for the really cool Faraday cage backpack that keeps our electronics safe and of course Yeti coolers for the cooler that keeps our beer cold. Thanks for watching this episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. If you want to follow more of us, just look at all of the stuff on the screen below. There's content all over the internet. Set your alarm to wake up to Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV if you like us that much. And we're out. These tubes were silver. Actually, they're painted and they, that's unacceptable. So the last thing to do on any project is change out the thing that was driving you the most crazy and this is it. Yeah. And I'm fixing it. That and the fact that these are American bolts. 
and I hate American Bolts. There shouldn't be any of them on a Toyota at all. But at least they're gold. Was it a lock? It was a lock. Wash off. What was the? Down, down. I don't know what's after that. You guys should work in it. That's right. <laughs> you got to do it by. <laughs> what happened? It's actually in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, hang on. Hang on. Look at him. Okay, back to me and shit. We just turned the power off and Corey's in the bathroom. All right, back to the back places. What? Wait a minute. Here we go. Okay. Ready and. Yeah. Okay, power went off yeah. and. <laughs> Cut to Jeremiah. <laughs>